Windows can help create a comfortable atmosphere in a room. Endoscopes are self-cleaning for perfect optics. This may all sound like science fiction, but it is already reality in the medicine, technology and industry sectors. Particles are the basis for these phenomena. Particles come in a huge variety of shapes and sizes, with different surface structures, configurations, magnetic and electrical features. All of these properties help define the overall effect. But how do we tailor these particles for specific applications? This is a key question which we want to address in the Centre for Functional Particle Systems. The centre consists of eight research areas and it houses a technical hall with almost 400 square metres of space and 10 different laboratories. We are working together in interdisciplinary teams addressing fundamental and applied questions in science and technology of particulate systems. The features and application areas of the custom-made particles are diverse. So too are the methods and processes developed by the scientists to produce the particles and yield the desired particle properties. Producing defined particles is only one topic which researchers study at FPS. Only rigorous characterization can ensure that the desired particle structure and conformation has been achieved. Various instruments are used to measure size, mass, shape, charge or surface structure of the particles. For certain applications, it is not the particles themselves but their controlled assembly which yields the desired effect. In order to form defined building blocks and assemble them to produce the desired structures, researchers at FPS work in multidisciplinary teams all under one roof. As complex problems transcend the traditional disciplines, cooperation between the various faculties is imperative. Engineers, chemists, physicists, mathematicians, materials science experts and nanomedicine specialists work together to optimize particle technology. Johann Schmidt is a chemist passionate about the production of the very smallest particles. Before we take a closer look at his work, let us first consider the different methods of particle production. There are two families of processes used to create nanostructures top-down and bottom-up processes. Top-down processes involve crushing or cutting the source material, while bottom-up processes refer to the chemical synthesis of the material from gaseous and liquid elements. Johan is working on a top-down process which makes novel microparticles from polymer granulate. So Johan, how does this process work? In additive manufacturing, powders are deposited and melted into thin layers. The device obtained is built layer by layer. The flowability of the powders is important in this process. The powder properties are determined by the individual underlying particles. The source material is crushed by cold, wet grinding. This process results in irregularly shaped segments which are smoothed into round spheres in the next step. Applying a final nanoscale surface coating ensures that the required flowability and optimized bulk density of the powder are achieved. Monaco Distazzo applies an alternative method for producing particles. She works with the bottom-up solvothermal production method and synthesizes custom-made particles. Usually this experimental approach is working like a black box where only the final results are accessible. However, a reactor has been designed and assembled to follow the particle formation starting from the molecular units. This is possible by implementing several analytical and spectroscopic techniques via suitable probes that are immersed in the liquid phase. This approach allows the reconstruction of the formation mechanism of particles.
With the volume of 1.5 liter, this reactor is ideal for the production of a large amount of nanoparticulate material. As an example, it is currently used for the production of color pigments. The blueprint for designing these functional particles was developed using mathematical simulations. This is how a methodical procedure can be adapted to technical applications such as solar cells and catalyst membranes of fuel cells. Robin Club Taylor has a focus on the synthesis of nanostructured particles. Another system where we're inspired by mathematical optimization is that of metal nanocoatings on glass or plastic particles. The metal may be partial or complete and give rise to strong optical resonances, making such particles promising for pigments, for solar cells or for theranostic applications. Since it is difficult to produce such core shell particles using batch reactors at large scale, we have developed continuous processes like this reactor here. This brings the advantage that we can use inline optical spectroscopy to measure the particle optical properties as they're produced. Today, the complete production process of functional particles is operated by an automated robot. Doris Sigetz is working on the development of process engineering for small nanoparticles in solution. The automated particle synthesis reaches a new level of reproducibility and controllability. This minimizes minute variations in processing that can severely impact product features. Every single process step for the formation of complex nanoparticles, such as doped multi-component core shell nanostructures, is fully automated to minimize experimental errors. Moreover, new materials can be identified by using such accelerated high-throughput experimentation. Now we have to check whether the synthesized particles really have the desired features. The particles therefore need to be characterized. Various devices are available for this purpose. Christian Lubert studies the analysis of Taylor particles by mass spectrometry. In contrast to optical instruments, an ion mobility mass spectrometer outputs the mass to charge distribution of mobility classified particles. This distribution provides information about particle properties such as chemical composition, shape and stability. So to be deflected in the electric field at all, the particles must first be ionized. This ionization is performed by the electrospray here at the entrance of the differential mobility analyzer. The ionized particles are first separated according to their mobility before being classified by the mass to charge ratio in the mass spectrometer. The obtained data can be plotted in a two-dimensional ion map where any deviation from smooth trajectory indicates a difference in particle morphology. The mass spectrometer is typically employed to characterize the size and shape of individual particles. Meanwhile, other devices focus on the entire particle ensemble in a sample. Using analytical ultracentrifugation, a combination of a centrifuge and a spectrometer, Johannes Walter can determine several parameters simultaneously. What is special about our centrifuge is an integrated spectrometer. It uses multi-wavelength detection by scattering and absorption in order to characterize the sedimentation behavior. This experimental setup allows the simultaneous multi-dimensional analysis of particles. That means characterizing size, shape and optical properties at the same time without losing accurateness or resolution. While in centrifugation, the multi-wavelength detector represents an innovative advancement, other characterization methods are purely based on optics. To be more specific, nonlinear optical spectroscopy. So what is different about your setup? Nonlinear optical spectroscopy only detects interfacial effects, 
every signal that is uh, not generated at a solid liquid or liquid gas interface, for example, is cancelled out. This allows us to determine molecular orientations at interfaces, for example, how self-assembled monolayers are organized on a molecular level or how protein foams are stabilized. This gives our approach a clear advantage over conventional mechanical, electrical or chemical characterization methods. And who is interested in particle assembly? I am. This is the central topic of Nicholas Fogel's research. For instance, the refractive index of a material may be controlled or altered by the presence of a thin ordered layer of specific nanoparticles on the bulk surface. In my group, we are using such small particles as building blocks to assemble them into macroscopic materials with fascinating properties. This allows us, for example, to tailor the wetting properties of a surface. We can then create materials that can repel water, oil or even bacteria. Also, we can assemble them into periodic nanoscale features that show structural coloration and thus mimic the interesting optical properties we find in nature in the wings of butterflies or birds. So these tiny particles seem to be more important than they first might appear. So what is the future of particle technology? Let's go ask Professor Wolfgang Poikert, who is the coordinator of the Cluster of Excellence Engineering of Advanced Materials and who established the Centre for Functional Particle Systems. What's your future perspective for small particles and all the scientists working on them? My dream is to develop beautiful, fine particles and to drive particulate science and technology to new world-class levels with manifold applications in science and technology. In particular, we would like to design and build particles with very specific properties on demand. Our approach is to first identify the desired property, say the color and optical appearance of a pigment, and then to develop the particles in terms of the right size, shape, composition, structure and surface properties to fulfill the requested requirement. Next, our in-depth understanding of particle processing allows us to design fabrication processes for industrial application of our particles. In this way, scientific methods at a very high level enable us for knowledge-based design and application of particles in quite diverse fields in science and technology. And as a teacher of particle technology, I would like to show the students, uh, our students, the beauty of our fascinating field.